We'll call this hearing to order again. This is a hearing that we have annually, I mean periodically, to review the annual financial report for fiscal year 2020 and 2021. Brenda, we'll turn the time to you for that review and presentation. Okay. Chris, do you have the, the other presentation? All right. This is a review of the annual financial report for 2021. As you are aware, we have to uh, submit the entire annual financial data to the Auditor General's office by October 15th. And this is basically a report that just summarizes all of the data on this report, but I also have to submit the accounting data up to the to the Auditor General's office. So this is just a summary of that report. So if you wanna come back down. It's the other one, the other way. So let me just start by giving you the average daily membership. This comes off of the summary page. Um, as you can see, the average daily membership, this, this compares the year 20 to 21. Um, as you can see, the attending um, average daily membership, this compares attending. What this means is it takes your ADM for your kids that are within your district plus the kids that are tuition in from like McNary, Concho, and um, Vernon Elementary School District. So 1851 versus 1687. That's how low we finished for 2021. And then the primary and secondary tax rate. The tax rate for 2021 was $3.58, and then the secondary tax rate was $1.82. You wanna go up to the next one. And then on the cover page, I did give you the entire packet that I um, for the board members. As you can see on the cover page, you'll see that the maintenance and operation expenditure by fund was $11,537,107. That is what the district spent for maintenance and operation. And maintenance and operation is the fund that's utilized to spend the majority of salaries and benefits for staff. It's used to pay for all of the utilities, professional services. So that's basically the primary funding source for the district. And then the classroom site fund is the monies we use to pay for teachers. Um, it also includes the performance pay for, uh, pay for teachers as well, we spend a little over a million dollars, one million one seven hundred and fifteen dollars And then we have the unrestricted capital outlay, the district spent $452,413. And then page one of 12 of the AFR, this is just a, a summary of it, you'll see the five um, levy funds that we call, these are the primary funds that we use to levy taxes. We have maintenance and operation, we have unrestricted capital, we have adjacent ways, bond building, and debt service. The beginning fund balance for maintenance and operation was $1.8 million. Year-to-date revenues collected was $12.8 million. Year-to-date expenditures was again $11,537,107. And then we had the transfers out for the energy and water savings account of $225,955. So we finished out in maintenance oper in operation about $2,888,908. Um, this is pretty good because right now we're not, as, we're not um, actually assessing any kind of um, um, interest or any, anything like that from the, from the treasurer's office. So um, right now we're sitting at about $2.1 million with the, with the county treasurer's office. So we're actually not assessing any kind of um, uh, warrants, warrant fees from the, from the treasurer's office. So we've gone from $1.8 million to $2.8 million. We actually collected about a million dollars more in cash for maintenance and operation. And then in unrestricted capital, we started out with $106,000. Year-to-date revenues, $350,000. We spent $452,000. And then ending cash balance is $5,287. Adjacent ways, $759,482 we started off with. Year-to-date revenues is $10,364. And this is primarily in the form of interest. Um, we didn't, we didn't um, assess any taxes on this fund. 
So we finished out with $769,846. Bond building, um, $410,609. Year to date revenues, $4,662. $347,403 we spent, and again, $67,867 left in this fund. And then debt service, um, this is the monies that we used to pay all of our bonds. We started out with $691,408. Year-to-date revenues is a little over $3.8 million. We paid $3.4 million in property taxes, not property taxes, but in bonds. So we finished out with a little over a million dollars in that fund. Go ahead and go to the next page. This is a summary of the maintenance and operation fund. This shows all of the different categories that we used to spin m and in. If you look at the last column down on the bottom, you'll see that we spent $11,537,107. It's really, really tiny, I'm sorry about that. Um, you'll see that there was actually a decrease year over year of about 14% in expenditures. And that's primarily because we had a decrease in utilities because of COVID. We had a decrease in supplies because of COVID, so we had a lot of decrease in different areas. Um, we had, and then the other thing too, is we also had federal funding come in for ESSER 1 and ESSER 2 that allowed us to transfer a lot of those expenditures from m and into those funds. So as you can see, look at line one, you'll see that there was a decrease of about 25% we actually were allowed to transfer salaries and benefits into those funds. So therefore, you're seeing a huge decrease in m and and it looks like there's a huge decrease in m and for, you know, no reason at all, but because of all those federal funds coming in, we're allowed to transfer those expenditures into those federal funds. So for that reason, we had a decrease in maintenance and operation. Do you have any questions in regards to that? Go to the next page. Okay, here is the classroom site fund, 301. Um, I've Remember, those are broken down into three funds. You have fund 11, 12, and 13. Beginning balances there um, a top, between the three funds is $53,419. Year-to-date revenues was a little over a million dollars, a million one, 328. Year-to-date expenses was a million one seven hundred and fifteen dollars, and ending balance was fifty-three thousand thirty-two dollars, a decrease year over year of about four point seven percent. We had less teachers that we paid out, so that's the reason why we had a decrease in funding. Page four of nine of the AFR is the unrestricted capital expenditures. This is just a breakdown of how we spent capital. Again, we spent $452,413 versus the prior year of $557,195, a decrease of 18.8% in expenditures. Again, we're allowed to transfer some expenditures from this fund into those federal funds and, and because of that reason you're seeing a decrease in capital itself. You want to go to the next page? This is just a breakdown of our capital assets as of June 30th, 2021. We have four different categories. We have lands and improvements, buildings and improvements. We have furniture, equipment, vehicles and the technology and we have construction and progress. These are all assets that are worth more than $5,000. So as of June 30th, we have approximately $97,919,000 on our property of anything that's over $5,000. Go ahead and go to the next page. This is the beginning and ending cash balance, revenues, indirect cost transfers, and expenditures for all federal and state programs. So if you take a look at line 17, 
funds 300 to 399 all federal projects. You'll see right there under expenditures, $1.7 million. That's where the transfers happen from MO into ESSER 1, ESSER 2, and then the enrollment stabilization grant. That's where the expenditure, that's where the transfers happen from MO and capital into this, this line item here. So that's where the transfers happen. And then you have your federal grants, which are Title I, Title II, 6B. You have your um, CTEDs, and then your state projects down on the bottom. You have your priority. You have your gifted education. You have your college credit exam. You have all your other state grants. If you see negative balances, the negative balances are due to timing of revenues. Go ahead and go to the next page. Page six of nine is the beginning and ending cash balance, revenues, transfers in, expenditures, all other funds, including student activity, auxiliary operations, and tax credits. The first column is your beginning fund balances, and then you have your revenues, any transfers out that you had, your expenditures, and all your ending fund balances for each one of these funds. You, you do have a couple negative cash balances. You have 691 and 695. Those are build, building renewal grants and the new school facilities. Those we're still researching. We have some revenue issues with those two funds from the school facilities board. So are there any specific questions on any one of those grants? If not, I'll go on to the next page. Page seven of nine includes various information such as bonds outstanding, assessed valuation and tax rates, current breakdown of expenditures by category and the average teacher salary. Top section shows the bonds outstanding as of July 1st, 2020. Any bonds that were issued in 21 bonds retired and bonds outstanding as of June 30th. I do want to point out that we started out with 22,220,000 as bonds outstanding. The bonds issued is $8.1 million. Those are the bonds that we refinanced during the year, the bonds we reissued during the refinance. Bonds we retired was $11.4 million. Those were the bonds that we retired when we refinanced and the bonds outstanding is $18,920,000. So we actually owe a whole lot more, a whole lot less than what we started out with because of the refinance. And then we have our district assessed valuation and our tax rates that I covered earlier. And then down on the bottom in section H shows the average teacher salary. As you can see from FY20, it was $48,650. It's actually dropped by 10%, $43,784. And that's because we had some teachers that were higher, highly paid that left the district and we brought in some lower paid teachers. And for that reason, it dropped. Next section. And this is one area I want to I want to show you, it shows year over year from fiscal year 20 to 21, you'll see that the classroom um, spending has actually gone up 1.7%. Food service has gone down. Um, plant has gone down. Transportation has gone down. Support services has gone up. And then there's a slight change in administration. But overall, classroom. Um, spending has actually gone up. So this is what's going to be pr um, printed in the um, Auditor General's report when it does come out in January or February, whenever that report comes out. And next page. Page eight of nine is the gifted enrollment information, gifted expenditures, special education expenditures by type and 
Tuition paid by type three districts. We're not a type three district. Maintenance and operation, special education by type. You'll see that the district spent approximately $1.7 million for special education programs. This includes special education, gifted education, ELL, and vocational programs. And then a new section is item 10. This is how much did we, the district spend for IEP pupil transportation. The district is spend, spending approximately $154,380 on um, IEP transportation cost. And then in section C is how much are we spending on gifted education? And then in section D down at the bottom is how much are we spending for our audit services? And then page nine of the audit or of the AFR is information for the National Pub Public Education Financial Survey Report. It's a massive report that requires all sorts of information. Um, and then the supplement is for the structured English immersion grant the district receives. The district received $26,250, which the district spent all of. And then down on the bottom is the food service. You'll see that the district received $925,717. We started out with a negative one hundred thousand three hundred and twenty six dollars the district has had a negative cash balance for as long as I can remember as long as I've been with the district and if you go to the next page if you look at line 29 you'll see that the district actually finished with a positive sixty seven thousand eight hundred and sixty five dollars yes we should we should this is yeah this is some very good news for the district so this is amazing and then down on the bottom it just shows how many meals the district reimbursable meals the district serve um, outside of the food that was delivered during covid so and then the last page is just the summary that will be posted on the district website, which just summarizes all of the funds that I just covered. Are there any specific questions in regards to any of the funds or any of the information I just covered? Questions from the board? If you have a question, turn your mic on so it can be heard. No questions? Thanks, Brenda. Appreciate that. This has to be turned in by the 15th, tomorrow. All right, well, thank you. Can we have a motion to adjourn this public hearing? A motion from Margaret, a second from Chuck, all in favor? Be unanimous. All right.